Good afternoon to you all. Uh, we've got a few technical problems here this afternoon, but hopefully everything will go according to plan. Good afternoon from a very sunny Scotland, and I hope it is sunny and warm wherever you are. Um, hopefully the technical things will get themselves sorted out and we'll be fine and ready for another coffee break catch up. My name is Mark Pendleton. I am your host. I'm delighted to be here um, and we are going to be looking at a number of things today, catching up with everything coffee break, talking a little about, uh, well, our talking point's an interesting one this week and we have also got our usual cultural catch up uh, coming up a little later on. So let me just check that everything is working here. Hopefully there's not too much of a delay. Uh, yes, so that's working. And this is working. Yes, we should be back up and running. So let us know who you are and uh, where you're watching. Um, we already have a few people saying hello in the comments. We've got Terry saying, ciao, Mark. Ciao, Terry. Uh, let me just move this down on the screen a little. We've got Nicole saying hi. Salve, Mark. A tutti. Uh, we've got Dave joining us, who is listening, but only up to season one, episode 36. That's fantastic. Just been to visit family in Italy for 12 days and loved trying to use his Italian. Fantastic. Thank you, Dave. We've also got Diane joining us from Toronto. I hope the sun is shining in Toronto today, uh, well, this morning. Um, if you're uh, joining us. Oh, tiens, nous avons aussi Pierre Menoir Herio who's joining us today. Bonjour, monsieur. J'espère que tout va bien. Um, so uh, the, uh, let us know where you're watching and uh, what you're listening to, what you're learning. And of course, over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about all things Coffee Break, all things language learning, and also looking forward a little to the summer, the summer in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, and uh, what comes after the summer also. So let us begin. Just to remind us, um, we are going to be going through some Coffee Break news. We'll be taking our talking point uh, and talking a little about language learning when you're perhaps doing other things. And then, of course, our cultural roundup. So let us begin straight away with our coffee break news. Okay, so this has been a very, very busy week at Coffee Break. It always seems that we have busy weeks, but that's a good thing because it's always good to, to keep busy and to be busy with things, especially when it comes to language learning. So let us look at a little at what we've been up to over the past week. So first of all, on Saturday, we had a very pleasant afternoon uh, when the whole team came to, uh, to together and we ate lots of lovely food and caught up with everyone. It was great to have everyone together and to, to celebrate the end of uh, in Marcha and also the, the completion of a few projects. Um, so that was lovely. Last Saturday we had everyone together. Now we've also been very busy over the past few few weeks, but the, over the past week in particular, publishing new content because we, as I said there, we finished in Marcha. This was episode 10 of in Marcha, which went out last uh, Friday and uh, episode 10 of in Marcha was a ronda de preguntas. And this is when we asked four questions to lots of people. All the people that we interviewed, we asked four questions to. So it's a great way to practice your vocabulary, to build your understanding. If you check out En Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish, season one, episode 10, the final episode in that season. Now, talking of En Marcha, because En Marcha has now completed and the full 10 lesson series is available, we're actually doing a special offer just for this coming week. And you can get 10% off the full version of En Marta with the coupon code CATCHUP. So this is especially for catch-up viewers. You are able to get that special discount on the full course of En Marta simply by using the CATCHUP coupon code. Now the direct link for that uh, special offer will come tomorrow in tomorrow's newsletter, the CATCHUP newsletter. So don't worry, you'll be able to click on the link and go straight there and the coupon code will be already applied if you're interested in purchasing the full version of En Marta. And as I say, that's just a special because we've come to the end of the series and the full course is now available. Now that bonus, those bonus materials include a whole range of additional content that will help you get the most out of each lesson of En Marta. 
the main lessons of Enmata are always just under 20 minutes, but with the full version, you get a full language study episode. So that can be up to 30 minutes worth of discussions of the language contained. There are full transcripts. There's an activity pack for each lesson. There's vocabulary. There's an, an enormous amount of content in Enmata. And we're actually adding in some bonus content this week in the shape of a, a grammar review and also a, a quiz and also the full vocabulary list for the season. And you won't believe it, but that extends to over 60 pages of vocabulary just in one season of In Matcha. So it just shows you how much goes into that one series. So if you'd like to benefit from this and you've not yet purchased the Coffee Break Spanish In Matcha premium version, then you can do so just until the 4th of July uh, with the coupon code, the coupon code catch up. And as I say, the link will be in the newsletter tomorrow. Okay, so what else have we been doing this week? Well, we published a new episode of Walk, Talk and Learn French. And this was how to use ne plus que. Now, this is a, a really, uh, really useful expression in, in, in French. And it combines the ne plus and ne que to give a specific meaning. So if you'd like to find out more about ne plus que, then you need to check out Walk, Talk and Learn French episode four. And that is, again, the link for that will be in our newsletters. You can find it on the YouTube channel or indeed on the website, but we'll be sending the direct link in tomorrow's newsletter. If you'd like to sign up for the newsletter, you can do so at radiolingua.com slash newsletter. And we'll put that link on the uh, the. The, the, the comments in the comments uh, a little later. If you're watching this and you're not watching live, then of, co of course you're very welcome to, but do feel free to post a comment, whether it's on YouTube, obviously on the, the YouTube uh, chat as we're as we're having this, this live broadcast, the YouTube chat is being used to uh, react to uh, things here and, here and now, and that should be able to be viewed after the event also. If you're on Facebook, of course you can post at any time too, and we'd be delighted to see your comments. So that was was uh, uh, the latest episode of Walk, Talk and Learn French, which went out last Sunday. Moving on, we did another publication of French on Monday with the fourth episode of the Coffee Break French magazine. And this was called Au Carrefour de l'Europe. Now, the Carrefour de l'Europe is a name given to the beautiful, the stunning city of Strasbourg. I've spent lots of time in Strasbourg and it's one of my favourite places in France. Uh, so we were delighted to, to talk about Strasbourg on that particular episode of the Coffee Break French magazine. So again, you can access that on the website and the link will be in the newsletter too. Let's move on. Uh, we continued our Tune for Tuesday series. Now, if you've not yet caught up with Tune for Tuesday, basically this is a new series that we've started which involves posting a new song every Tuesday. And we give you a little bit of background of the song, we link to the lyrics of the song, and we provide, of course, the either the video version or the audio version on YouTube or Spotify. And you can enjoy that song and building up a, a new repertoire of foreign language songs. So you will be able to uh, access that at uh, the on, on the website. Just search for Tune for Tuesday on the website. And of course, you'll see the playlist on YouTube and we've got a Spotify playlist too. So we had a Mexican song uh, this Tuesday and coming up next week, I think there's a German song. So you can look forward to that. Now, we've also released one of our one minute courses this week on the, the YouTube channel. And this week is the time for Turkish. So One Minute Turkish is now available, the full 10 lessons of One Minute Turkish. And you can enjoy a Turkish espresso break. I've had some Turkish coffee and it's very, very strong. So this is a really strong coffee break in Turkish. and But it happens very quickly, obviously. It's One Minute Turkish. And you can learn the basics of Turkish with our short 10 lesson course over on our YouTube channel too. Now, what's next coming up? Uh, we have also just about, this is the, still to come, so we've got a, a, an episode of Coffee Break German to go coming tomorrow. And this episode asks the, the question, was machst du beruflich? So what do you do for a job? What is your job? And the people to whom we asked that question responded. And again, a great way to develop your German vocabulary through the Coffee Break German to go series. The whole series is of course available uh, on uh, well, each episode is available on the on the YouTube channel, and uh, we are now at episode seven. So episodes eight, nine, and ten will continue over the next few weeks. So that is uh, Was machst du beruflich from Coffee Break German to go. 
Um, and let's see what's coming up next. Next Monday, we have our fifth episode of the Coffee Break Italian magazine. And as you've probably guessed from that photo there, we are cooking. We are saying, Cuciniamo le orecchiette. Now, le orecchiette are these little ears shaped pasta. They're called orecchiette because they're little ears. And we talk about this and it's actually it's a bumper lesson of Coffee Break Italian due for you on Monday uh, because we're also talking in this episode about our experiences filming recently in Italy. Um, so there's lots of great content there, lots of interesting Italian and of course in the bonus materials you get a full transcript of all of that with all of the vocabulary and everything explained in detail there. So you can look forward to our fifth episode of the Coffee Break Italian magazine next Monday. Now I should say that after the fifth episode, and the same goes for French, but after the fifth episode, we're going to be pausing until after the summer. We're having a little bit of a summer break here. It has probably been the uh, the biggest, the, the, the busiest uh, set of, of, well, the busiest few months, basically, of, of publishing content that we've ever had. So we're going to have a little bit of a break, but there obviously is still new stuff coming over the summer. We've got lots of stuff planned for you over the summer. Um, but in terms of the actual podcast episodes, we will be back in August with them. So you can look forward to episode six of the French and Italian magazine podcasts uh, in the, at the end of August. And this will give you some time to review what you've covered so far. So, uh, just on that note, then the next Coffee Break French magazine podcast will be published on the 8th of July. So, that's going to be the last one for the rest of the summer. And then we'll be back again uh, late August with episode 6 of the Coffee Break French magazine. Now, one other thing to mention is the fact that over the summer, we are going to be continuing to publish content, of course, on, on social media. We'll be continuing to publish content uh, on the blog. And we've got more Tunes for Tuesday coming up. We've also got the return of the Meet the Coffee Breakers uh, section of our blog. And if you've not yet uh, had a look at that, whoops, that's the wrong button. Uh, if you've not yet had a look at the Meet the Coffee Breakers area, if you just head to our website and click on blog, and then you'll see the Meet the, the Coffee Breakers section there, and you can find out about other people just like you learning a language with Coffee Break. And I know that some of you who are uh, joining us uh, today in the, the live chat, um, some of you actually feature on that. So it's, it's great to, to have you on the Meet the Coffee Breakers section. And we've got a, a, a new collection of stories of coffee breakers that you will be able to read starting next week. And so Meet the Coffee Breakers will continue, we will have Tune for Tuesday continuing, and we will also have the continuation of uh, our, all our social content as, as always. Okay, now there's something else, uh, a bit of exciting news, something that we are extremely pleased about. And this just came to our, uh, our, our attention yesterday. And that is the fact that we have reached a bit of a milestone in terms of delivering free language lessons. And I'd like to show you this little video to explain a bit more. So yes, we are absolutely over the moon to be able to announce that we are now delivering over 3 million free language lessons to learners worldwide every month. And that is just fantastic news. We are so, so, so pleased about this. So thank you as a member of the Coffee Break community. Thank you for continuing to enjoy our content and continuing to download our podcast. And we hope that you continue to enjoy these along with the millions of other learners around the world who are enjoying, enjoying Coffee Break. So that is our news for this week, and it's time now to focus our attention on our talking point. Our 
our talking point this week is is based on what time of year it is, because basically what we'd like to to have a chat about is this whole idea that when it comes to the time when perhaps your class stops for the summer or for the winter or something like that, when perhaps you've been uh, busy and really motivated by going along to your class or your favourite podcast stops for the end of the season, how do you keep your language skills going? What do you do to continue practicing that language? Do you take a break from it? Is it worth taking a break from the, the language? Or do you keep it going in other ways? Obviously, we are coming to the, the end of our seasons, if you like, with in Marta and so on. And obviously, we are uh, also coming to the point where we, we do need to take a little bit of a break so that we've got the energy to come back with lots more content for you uh, after the summer. So what can you do to keep things going over the summer? Do you use an app? Do you use new content? Do you go off and look for another podcast? There's lots of other podcasts out there, of course. We think ours is the best, but obviously there are other ones too. So how do you keep your language skills up when your class is finished or when your favorite season is finished? And as an extension to this, how do you practice your language while you're on vacation? So if you're traveling, do you get the opportunity to practice your language? Um, perhaps you get more of an opportunity to practice your language while you're on a vacation because you've got a little more time to yourself. Perhaps you're very busy during your, your normal life. Uh, but when you take a vacation, when you take a holiday, you get the chance to, to calm down and to sit down and to focus on that language. Uh, we are off on holiday next week and I'm going to hopefully be picking up a little bit more of my Swedish because we're going to be going to Sweden later in the summer but hopefully when we were in Spain, I'm going to get the chance to learn a little more Swedish before I go to Sweden. So I'm looking forward to sitting by the pool with my Swedish book. And I know probably that makes me sound like a bit of a language geek, but yeah, that's what I am. I'm quite happy to be a language geek with my Swedish book at the pool. Um, so what do you do? What are the ways in which you practice your language while you're on vacation or on, on, on indeed on a break from your class? So I'm going to give you, as usual, the one minute to have a think about this and then we'll have a chat. And ideally, the, the idea is that if you have some ideas that you can share, perhaps you're going to give some ideas either to me as to how I can continue my language skills or indeed to the other people watching today. So here's the question. Let's hear your thoughts. How do you keep up with your language practice when your classes end or when you're on vacation? Okay, so I'm looking forward to seeing these answers. How do you continue to practice your language skills while you're on vacation? Let's have a look to see if anybody's been able to uh, post some ideas. Now, Shireen here is saying YouTube. Now, I'm, I'm guessing Shireen is saying uh, she uses YouTube to uh, practice the, the language that she's learning. And of course, there's loads of really, really interesting content on, uh, on, on YouTube, and you can use lots of content to, to learn. What I would suggest also is try turning on the subtitles on YouTube. Sometimes videos are provided with subtitles. We tend to provide subtitles for almost all our videos on YouTube, and other providers can do the same. But sometimes if subtitles aren't provided, then YouTube can automatically add subtitles. Now, that depends, obviously, on the, the clarity of the way in which the words are spoken and whether the automatic translation and the automatic uh, transcription of those videos uh, is done well enough by, by YouTube. But it's, it's worth having a look at, at that and seeing if you can actually um, see the subtitles on YouTube. 
We have got a few comments here. Barbara is saying, hello, Barbara, nice to see you today. Um, Barbara is saying, review season two Italian. So she sped through lessons 15 to 30 to start the soap opera Mi Estate. I listened while gardening outside, looking forward to adding Italian music to my practice. So hopefully our Tune for Tuesday will help you, Barbara, uh, with that. And you can keep up with the Tune for Tuesday all through the summer. Um, Manal is saying by videos, so he's using uh, videos to, to uh, make sure his language skills are, are kept up to, to scratch. Amanda is saying, I repeat lessons from Coffee Break Italian and have my notebook with me. Now, if Amanda, Brett, watercolour artist, is uh, the person who has been posting some beautiful uh, Coffee Break Italian practice content on Instagram, Amanda, we love your content. If it's not you, then perhaps you could do that. You could actually create some uh, watercolours using the Coffee Break Italian uh, words and phrases that you're learning. Um, so having your, your wee jotter with you is also very important. So good stuff, Amanda. Uh, Nicole is saying, I usually listen to music and try to find meetups with groups of people so I can socialize and keep my Italian going. Fantastic, Nicole. Great ideas there. James is saying, meet up with other French learners at a cafe for a chat. Uh, Washington DC has many social groups for French learners. If you're not sure about how to find uh, social groups to, to meet up, then you can go to meetup.com and there you'll find uh, French language groups or Italian language groups. And you should be able to find one fairly close to you. And then you can go along and, and meet up and maybe have a coffee or uh, uh, something nice to eat and chat with other French learners. And I think very often people are a little uh, shy, perhaps nervous about going along to these kind of groups. But very often it's absolutely OK to go along and just listen your first time. So listen into other conversations. You don't need to take part too much. Um, obviously, the more you take part, the more you'll get out of it. So thank you, James, for that uh, suggestion. Uh, Hernan is saying watching movies or series in that language and of course with things like Netflix and, and other uh, streaming services it's so easy to get access to fantastic content in the language. Um, we've got a YouTube suggestion from Shireen here, learning French with Pascal on YouTube, he is very good, excellent. Um, Carol is saying, sbagliando sin para, è vero. Uh, I will be going back to the beginning of the Coffee Break podcast and review each day. I always seem to find a gem of information tucked into each podcast that I've never heard before. That is a, a, another great idea, Carol. Thank you. Um, Chuck is saying, mi piace leggere la giornale d'Italia. So he likes to read the, the newspaper in, in Italian. Uh, another great idea, you can read newspapers online. Um, there's access to, in fact, we, we shared recently a, a nice link um, and I'll try to find that again and we'll maybe try to get this into the newsletter tomorrow. It was a link for the front pages of newspapers from around the world. So you can get local newspapers uh, and uh, many, many national newspapers from all around the world. And it's a great way of just getting a quick view of how local papers are seeing national and international news. So we'll try to get that into uh, the, the, the newsletter tomorrow. Amanda is confirming, yes, it's me. It is me. Amanda, if that's the case, then thank you very much. We, we love seeing your, uh, your Coffee Break Italian watercolours. And uh, we also need to get in touch with you because we'd like to share one of them on our Instagram feed. And we hope that that's OK with you. Um, so we'll, we'll double check with you before we do that. But thank you for posting those. Deborah uh, is saying, I am trying to review some grammar, listen to spoken Italian podcasts and read as much as possible in the language. I've ordered the Italo Calvino book that Francesca recommended. Excellent. Good stuff, Deborah. We hope that you enjoy some Italo Calvino. Brilliant. So thank you for all these ideas and we hope that all of you get the opportunity to to relax a little over the, the this well depending in, if you're in the northern hemisphere over your summer holidays um if you're in the southern hemisphere then hope the winter brings a chance to to uh to to cook to, to be cozy and warm in the in, in, in inside and you can pull up with uh your, your put your feet up with a book and uh listen to some music in the in the foreign language Right, now there's one other thing I wanted to mention today in our talking point. Let me just bring in our uh, talking point slides here. So we've done that one. Let me just move on to this one because um, what we are also doing at the moment is looking at ways in which uh, Coffee Break courses and, and podcasts 
could be used in a work environment because we've been contacted by some businesses who are looking for language training and very often businesses looking for language training are looking for uh, systems that they can use that they can tick boxes and, and see that uh, the x number of employees have learned this 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 and this and, and that's that's fine however we think coffee break provides uh, a fantastic way to help people acquire language skills in a work environment but do so in a very friendly and, and interesting way. In fact, it's the kind of thing that if, if we can encourage people who are, are perhaps learning for work, learning for career prospects and so on, to use Coffee Break, then they can do so in their downtime and use their downtime without it taking time away from the, the work that they're doing uh, on a daily basis. But we know that lots of our community already use Coffee Break within a working environment or for work purposes. So we'd really love to hear your stories on that basis. What we'd love you to do is head to the link and the link will come in the newsletter tomorrow, but I'll put the link here on the screen and head to this address. Uh, I'm just gonna bring this one in. Radiolingua.com slash coffee break at work. And there's a little form there where you can add your story about how you have used coffee break within a working environment. Now, if, if you are not using Coffee Break in a working environment, that's absolutely fine. If you're learning for personal purposes or family purposes or for travel purposes or cultural purposes, that's absolutely brilliant. We, we think that's fantastic. What we're particularly interested in for this project, the Coffee Break at Work, is people who are using it in a working environment. So it, I would only suggest that you go to that link if you're using it for work purposes or if you've started learning French in order to speak to French customers or clients or, or something like that. We'd love to hear your story and as I say that link will be in tomorrow's newsletter so you can let us know what you think there. Okay, I think for now we're going to move on from our uh, talking point and move uh, to our reviews. It's time to have a look at our reviews for this week. So let's bring in uh, this slide here. Here we are. So this is a Facebook review from Catherine Somerville. Thank you very much indeed, Catherine, for posting this on Facebook. She described uh, Coffee Break French as sensible, applicable vocabulary to everyday situations as a visitor to France. It explains the obvious pitfalls and assumptions English speakers made. Had lots of I've always wanted to know that moments. Mark has a soothing, enthusiastic tone in his voice. All the guest presenters are friendly and fun. Great programme. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi, Catherine. Uh, that is a lovely review to, to get. Now, if you'd like to leave a review, you can, of course, do so on Facebook. You can do so on uh, Apple Podcasts and any other podcast area that you're, that you're using. We had another review here from Taylor Brook Berman on Facebook for Coffee Break Italian. Listening to this podcast brought me from absolute beginner to a level where I felt comfortable enrolling in a more intermediate class at a local language school. I've listened for almost two and a half years and still go back and re-listen to episodes and browse the bonus materials for review. And most importantly, I know never to order a cappuccino afternoon or order chicken on a pizza. Well, I can see Francesca laughing as she, as she sees you say that um, because it's an ongoing thing, as you know, the whole chicken on a pizza idea. But thank you very much indeed for those reviews. Okay, it's time to look at this week's cultural... This week, as ever, there are many exciting things happening uh, all around the, the world indeed. And we've picked our favourite four for this particular weekend. Uh, to share with you and to give you an idea of either where you can go physically if you happen to be near the area or where you can go virtually if you are perhaps not able to travel to that area. Now, as far as I can tell, this weekend is going to be very, very, very hot indeed in many parts of Europe. So if you are going out, make sure you get your sunscreen on. However, let's take a look at our uh, cultural suggestions for this week. Starting off with, uh, let me see, where are we going first? We're going to Spain first and to the, the town of Arro in the La Rioja region. So this is one of the, the big wine regions of, of Spain, of course. And this particular event is the Batalla del Vino. Now, let's take a look at what this involves. It's a, an annual wine fight in Northern Spain. And it's one of the biggest food and drink battles in the world. It celebrates the saints of San Juan, San Felices and San Pedro 
And what happens is that more than 500 litres of red wine is thrown into the air with the aim of soaking as many people as possible. At noon, the fight stops and everyone begins to feast on snails and lamb chops. And then the party continues back in Arrow with live music, dancing and street stalls. So this is on from the 29th of June onwards. Uh, or, no, sorry, it's on, on the 29th of June. So that is, if my memory serves me well, I can't quite remember what day we are. Yeah, that is Saturday. So this Saturday coming, if you happen to be in that area, you can go along to the, the Batalla del Vino. And if you would rather not get soaked in wine, perhaps you could just have a nice glass of wine to enjoy the Batalla del Vino. Okay, so what next? Uh, bring this back in. We are going from La Rioja, the Spanish wine region, to Chianti, the Italian wine region. Now, this one's not about wine. Instead, it's a festival of theatre, music, markets, parade, food and festivities. Ten days, in fact, happening in San Donato in Poggio, which is a, a town in Tuscany, in the Chianti region, as I, as I said. So there is, the, the town itself is very much a pedestrian town, so you can wander through the streets and take, every, take in everything that's happening at your own pace. A fantastic way to enjoy all this theatre and music and food and so on. Uh, there are parades that take place during the, the Bruxellata, and you can, time, sorry, you can spend time in the Piazza del Pozzo Nuovo to sample all of the fine foods and wines that are produced locally. If you're looking to appreciate some of the fine artists from the area, then you can find various musical events in Porta Fiorentina. And there you can enjoy more of the local refreshments. Of course, some uh, Chianti wine as well as the, the food that is around there. So this starts on June the 27th, which is to today, and it continues on until the 8th of July. And again, if you are heading to La Bruxellata in San Donato in Poggio, then make sure you pack your sunscreen if you're wandering around the town, because no doubt it will be very hot indeed. Okay, so that is our Italian suggestion for the month. Let's see, for the week rather, let's see about our uh, German suggestion for the week for German language learners. Uh, so again, I'll bring this in and we shall click this button here to reveal our German. And this is the Elbhangfest in Dresden. Now, this is a street festival in the city of, of Dresden, which is the capital of the eastern German state of Saxony. And the, the, the Elbhangfest is a festival, an arts festival, organised by local citizens. And there are uh, concerts, both classical and, and rock music. There's theatre, dance, recitals and special events for children. There are markets for local crafts and culinary specialities uh, to, to sample when you're enjoying the festival there. There are guided tours and lectures to help you understand more about the region and its history. And at the same time, there's modern art, which is representing the contemporary spirit of the, the area. The whole festival begins with a, a parade, and that happens on the 28th of June. So if you are into all things cultural and you happen to be able to get to Dresden in, in Saxony, then you can enjoy the Elbhangfest. And of course, the Elbhangfest comes from the fact that it's on the River Elbe. And uh, the, the, the idea is that the Elbhangfest is all around the, the banks of the river and celebrating the culture in that local area. So that is our German suggestion for this week. One final suggestion is for French learners. And this week we're heading to Canada, to Montréal, to Montreal. Now, this one is called A Table, le repas français se raconte. And this is an exhibition which is a, a history of gastronomy, a history of French gastronomy. And it takes place in the Pointe à Calière, which is a, a museum of archaeology and history in on old Montreal. Now, the, the exhibition was founded in 1992 as part of celebrations to mark Montreal's 350th birthday. The exhibition pays tribute to the captivating story of French, of French gastronomy from Gallo-Roman times to the present day. And the, the website is really, really nice. So I would definitely suggest you have a look at the website for this uh, exhibition if you can't make it to Montreal. Uh, it's already underway. It started on the 6th of June and it is on the way all through the summer to October. So you can take your time getting to Montreal and uh, enjoy this exhibition. Now, the link for this, as the link for all of the things that we've covered in uh, today's catch-up, is, of course, available as part of our Coffee Break catch-up newsletter. And that goes out every Friday. So next, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, you'll be getting your Coffee Break catch-up newsletter if you're already subscribed to 
our newsletter. If you're not yet subscribed to the newsletter, then you can go to radiolingua.com slash newsletter and there you'll be able to sign up for the newsletter and you'll receive tomorrow's catch-up email. All the links for all the cultural events are posted there and of course we include both English language, if you don't speak the language, and also the foreign language. So for example the, the Montreal one will be in French and there will be an English version too. Likewise with the Battaglia del Vino it will be in Spanish and English. So you can read about it in English or indeed you can do some language practice in the language that you're learning. Okay, that is almost it. But there are a few other final things that we need to do today. First of all, uh, we need to announce our June Coffee Break Mug winners. Now, as ever, we have been uh, receiving lovely postcards from learners all around the world. And uh, at the end of each month, we draw two postcards and they will randomly out of the, the hat. These two postcards uh, will win a Coffee Break Mug. So this month's winners, the winners for June, uh, who will be receiving the mug in the post over the next uh, week or a couple of weeks or so are Fiona Basile from Australia and Mika Fuji from Japan. So congratulations to Fiona and Mika and thank you for sending uh, your postcards and indeed thank you to everyone for sending your postcards. We will be continuing with our postcards uh, competition uh, in, uh, we'll not be doing one at the end of July but we will be doing one at the end of August. So in the meantime feel free to send us your postcards um, and in, at the end of August we will draw four rather than just two because we've missed uh, July. Okay, talking of July and talking of what's happening next. First of all, this will be our last uh, Coffee Break catch-up video for uh, a few weeks. We'll be back in August with the catch-up videos. Um, but in the meantime, our catch-up newsletter will continue. So there will be cultural links, there will be news about our uh, most recent resources that we're, we'll, will be published over the next few weeks. And you can continue to receive that newsletter by, of course, making sure you're signed up for the newsletter. But we'll not be doing a Coffee Break catch-up video over the summer, uh, basically because uh, various members of the team will be on holiday at various times. Uh, so this will be the last catch-up for a few weeks, uh, but we really hope that you've been enjoying these catch-ups. So that's the first thing. The second thing, of course, is to uh, draw your attention to the whole idea of asking a question. So just a reminder that we are producing our uh, Coffee Break magazine shows. And in the Coffee Break magazine shows, we need your questions. So that's not just for French and Italian. It is for uh, German and Spanish too, because we will be publishing a Coffee Break magazine in German and Spanish in the autumns. So we're working on this just now. If you've got a question about the language, then you can send us your questions. And you can do so either by going to coffeebreakquestions.com and recording your voicemail there, or use the message app on your phone, voice message app on your phone, record a question and simply email it to radiolingua at gmail.com. So we hope to receive lots of questions over the summer and we will uh, do our best to answer those questions in future episodes of the Coffee Break Catch-Up. Okay, there have been a few questions. There have been a few questions and, and comments on the chat. So I'm just going to scroll back through our chat uh, to double check if I've got any questions here that I've got to answer. Thank you to everyone for all the, the, the comments. Uh, Emily's saying that she's also in season one, but she's excited to learn for my trip to Sicily in September. Fantastic. I've never been to Sicily. Francesca always tells me about Sicily. And when we were in Italy, she every Sicilian accent she came across, she was like, ah, oh, ma che bella cento, siciliano. So I'd love to go to Sicily and hear all these bella cento, uh, the, the be, be accenti, uh, siciliani. We've got, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, but Mira Cleuri. Uh, who is saying Guten Abend, Konbama from Tokyo, Konbama. Uh, so thank you for joining us this evening, very late in the evening in, in Tokyo. Um, we uh, have got Carol saying Ciao Mark, Dar Canada. Uh, Pierre Benoit commenting Tout va bien, je suis en train de prendre le soleil dans le jardin. La vie est dure, ah, quand même, quand même, yeah. <laughs> La vie est dure, life is tough. Um, Shirin is saying, J'enchante te voir à Guyana. So delighted to see you in Guyana. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us from Guyana. Um, Amanda 
this is our, our watercolor artist is saying I am from New Zealand and I live in Lucca for three months. I love Lucca. I speak a little bit of Italian, not very well, um, with my with my Italian friends. So Lucca is a beautiful Italian city, very close to the part of Italy where my family comes from. So my family is from from Barga, uh, well, part of my family is from Barga um, in the Garfagnana, so just near to uh, Lucca. Barbara saying, una celebrazione meritata. Grazie, Barbara. Uh, Nick is saying, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, Chuck is joining us from Texas. Hi, Chuck. We've got Nancy from New York. Um, who else do we have here? Uh, we've got Farshad. Farshad is asking a question about, as a beginner, which podcast do you, rec do you recommend uh, to learn French? Well, Obviously, we would recommend Coffee Break French, as would I, would, I imagine many of the, uh, the the listeners who are joining us here. So if you've not come across Coffee Break French yet, Farshad, then we definitely suggest that you start with the absolute beginning of Coffee Break French with season one and work your way through the podcast there. And you'll really begin to build up a, a solid foundation for your French and develop your skills that way. Uh, I hope that helps. Nick is saying, I think once in a while you should have a get-together at a restaurant with Coffee Break staff and your local patrons. Oh, peut-être. Perhaps maybe we'll think about doing something like that. Um, Deborah is saying that she comes from Texas. Nicole is saying congratulations for our 3 million monthly listeners. Thank you very much, Nicole. Steve is joining us from Southern California. Natalia is joining us from uh, the Republic of Georgia. Wow. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from there. Uh, we've got Manal watching from France. Uh, then we've got lots of comments about our talking point. And I'm going to skip forward to the end. Uh, and Hui is saying, thank you, Mark and the team at Coffee Break. You helped me learn French while I studied in Paris and you're helping me learn German while I'm in Berlin. Keep doing the awesome job. Thank you very much indeed. And if you happen to be learning these languages uh, from a, a work point of view, who you, then perhaps you can fill in that form that we, we posted earlier. Um, that would be great to hear. Okay, we've got Elena who's saying, if you start doing Coffee Break Russian, I will help you with pleasure. Finishing season two in Italian and it's better than Batman movies. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, Sophie saying, watching from Southampton, about to go back to Montpellier tomorrow, where I spent my year abroad. Thank you so much for all the amazing podcasts, Coffee Break Languages. I literally recommend them to everyone. Thank you very much, Sophie. It is fantastic to see your comments. It's fantastic to to, uh, to hear from you, to, to know that what we're doing uh, makes a difference and to know what we are doing is, is helping you in your learning of the language. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking part in in the, the Coffee Break Catch-Up. Thank you for all your enthusiasm over the past year. Ultimately, we're coming to the end of term here, in a sense. So we would like to say a huge thank you to everyone. It only remains for me to say thank you and goodbye in the language of the One Minute Languages courses that we've launched this week. And it's Turkish. And I'm, yes, I can remember it. Thank goodness. It is Teşekkür ederim and Güle Güle. Thank you very much indeed. Have a lovely summer wherever you are. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, have a lovely winter. We will be back with the Coffee Break Catch-Up in August. And uh, of course, there's still stuff going out over the next few weeks. Um, you can enjoy all of that and uh, keep, keep in touch. Let us know how things are going. And we will be back with you in August. But thank you very much once again. And uh, that's it for today. Teşekkür ederim, kule